we going to start with a short and needed word of prayer. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for able mind and body. Thank you for the opportunity to gather to learn more and to grow closer to you. Lord, I come with all that I am. Yes. Striving to be all that you've created me to be. Yes. And in this moment, I pray that I'm used to share what message you bless me with bless and that the people are better for it. Yes. In your righteous name, I pray. Amen. 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 Um, I'm going to start with a scripture. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully mm. made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to me. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sun. And that is Psalm 139, 13 through 17 in the New International Version. My mom told me when I was younger, you know, um, if you're going to sweep the floor, then you sweep it like nobody else is sweeping All it. Right. If you're going to be a president, right. then you govern like no one else has uh, governed. If you are a plumber, if you are the trash truck man, whatever it is that you're doing, you're doing it to the very best of your ability. All right. As if you were mandated to do that. All right. And from that and that scripture, I concluded that we've all been given something. Something specific, something that nobody else has, um, something that no one else can duplicate, even if they are in that arena to do whatever that is. Mm. And with that gift, it, it requires a particular attention um, to what it is and a particular honing in, focusing on what that is so that you can deliver it to the world. And I would go on to even believe that without that gift that you share, the world is not complete. All right. Mm -hmm. And it is still longing for something, for an answer that mm -hmm. you have. All right mm -hmm. now. That if you hold, we will continue to be searching for where it is mm -hmm. and what it's doing. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for where God is in the world. So you have to ask yourself, what are you doing? All right. How are you showing up to be that? And um, I'm going to go a little out to go in, in the subject of this sermon, that how Jesus is like Kanye, but Kanye is not like Jesus. Mm. Now, uh, I know there's quite a bit of controversy surrounding Kanye, but I will unapologetically say that I am a huge fan. And uh, as I said, I'm bringing all of myself to this, so I had to, to make it relevant. All right. um, now, Jesus was a miracle worker, as we know him. Um, he healed the sick. He fed the poor. He showed up in places and conversations that people deemed unworthy. Um, he did the things out of order, as we learned, he flipped the tables. All right. Uh, he disturbed the order as we knew it. And not only that, Jesus came to the earth with a mandate from God to do a specific thing. Mm -hmm. And regardless of who co-signed that thing or who said it was right or who said what day he was supposed to do that particular miracle on, he did it anyway. Mm -hmm. And that was because he knew what he was here for. And he didn't waste time in convincing anyone because he knew what that was. All right. Mm -hmm. And um, although something so weighty, something so large as turning water into wine and people touching the hem of his garment and being made new, you would think that somebody like this would be living like royalty, mm -hmm. would be revered by the community as something that is not like anything they've ever seen. But Jesus was born in a manger. Mm -hmm. All right. And wrapped in swaddling clothes. All right. And he lived lowly, and he served lowly, and he searched for the people who were left out. Mm -hmm. And that is where he spent his time. Mm -hmm. and that is where he did his work, and that is where he used his gift. So what does Kanye have to do with any of this? Now, Kanye believes that he has a gift, and not only does he have a gift, but he has deemed himself as a genius. And in my opinion, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy is a work, is a masterpiece, in my own personal opinion. So here Kanye is, who is, you know, this boy from Chicago, uh, who has a gift of making music. And he believes in it so much that he's dedicated his life 
to creating this over and over again, these moments, these masterpieces. And not only that, he's gotten so arrogant to the point where it's, where it's almost like, and you don't see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And you can't recognize this gift? And you won't give me your Grammys? Mm -hmm. And you won't let me also design in whatever fashion industry that I choose to be in? Because you don't believe it? Well, it's not me that's crazy. It's obviously you. Mm -hmm. So here we have the juxtaposition of Jesus being our literal miracle worker and Kanye a little too haughty in what he believes that he is and this gift that he's been blessed with. All right. That is necessary for the world in his opinion, but it's getting lost in translation of how much he thinks of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mercy. So then it brings me back to my point, how Jesus is like Kanye, but Kanye is not quite like Jesus. I think to myself one time from a Kanye uh, interview, he says that if you're a fan of me, you're not actually a fan of me, you're a fan of yourself, and I'm just the espresso shot in the morning. And it's because Kanye gives us the courage to believe that we might have something special that we can brag about. Mm -hmm. That we might actually have a gift that is not like anybody else and that the world needs. So in the two, they have this mandate from God. They have this understanding that they are set apart and special and necessary. All right. And I think to myself sometimes, if we just had an ounce of Kanye's confidence, <laughs> if we could just believe a little bit of what Kanye believes of himself about ourselves, what could we be doing? Mm -hmm. If I took Kanye's espresso shot every morning, would I be worried about whether I was going to succeed in dev school? Mm. Would I be nervous about what I was going to get up here and say to y'all about mm -hmm. Jesus? Would I be worried about my place in this world and who says what about me being a woman and who says what about me being black and who says what about me being from this little small town that ain't nobody ever heard of called Lawrenburg, North Carolina? All right. Mm -hmm. Or would I believe that it might be true? that it might be necessary, mm. that the world might actually hear what I have to say and what I've been crafted to do. Mm. And like Jesus, maybe I wouldn't even stop to argue to make the conversation, to help you to believe that I've been sent to do what it is mm. that I've been sent to do. And maybe I would just actually do it. And like Kanye, I would make those spaces for myself. Mm. Mm. And I would strive to see my name in lights because I knew that I deserved them. And without them, this world would be missing something. Missing something extraordinary. Yeah. Missing something that only I had. Mm -hmm. And so I reflect on the two, and I see where the error comes in Kanye. That yes, the gift is there. And yes, he's capable, and even makes masterpieces. But if I start to believe that it's solely me, All right. mm -hmm. that's where my demise comes in. If I start to believe that if I gain all of this and this recognition and this affirmation and I finally convince them that I really have it, that it's really there, that I've been doing this, that I've been making these beats, that they've been hot fire for a long time, but you didn't know it. Where, what is the point? What is that validation going to do? Where is that going to serve me? And if I rely solely on the limitations of my humanness as my source, I'm going to fall. Mm -hmm. And like we've seen with Kanye, he's gotten to a place where we don't know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's particularly because he's relied too much on what and who he is to be his validation for this world. Mm -hmm. And that will not serve you anywhere. Mm -hmm. And we talk about how his mental health is, has now become an issue, and it's more because this world is too hard to live as your source. Amen. All right. There's too much out here for you to rely solely on you. All right. There's too much going on up here for you to be your end all be all, Amen. for people to be your end all be all, for money to be your end all. All right. Be -all. I've traveled uh, in and out the country sometimes and have gotten jammed up, particularly because of time zone, the transfer of currency, and even if my dad was on the other end to send me whatever amount of money in that moment, it could not fix my issue. All right. And I was still left out and alone. And I, if I put all of my everything into what that was supposed to be, I too would fall like Kanye does when you believe solely in the gift. 
being his source. Mm -hmm. And so it made me think of the scripture in Matthew 6, 19 through 24. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where right. moths and vermin destroy, and where mm -hmm. thieves break in and steal. Right. But store mm -hmm. for yourselves treasures in heaven, heaven. where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, yeah. there your heart will be All also. Right. Wow. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full mm. of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. Mm. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the, end, the right. one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So Jesus came here, as I said, born in a major. People wondering, who is this man that people keep talking about? And who does he think he is? Because he said that he came here to something. But Jesus knew. And there was not an argument to be made because he knew when he came what it was that he was supposed to do. And he knew the gifts that were going to take him through to do it. And he lived that out. So I encourage you all to think of that. To think of that loneliness. But not just in the way that you deny yourself so much that you believe that you are low. But you believe that even with that gift, humility is the only thing that will sustain you. All right. And that connection to God is what will give you the spaces that you need to fulfill that gift. And it's there. And it doesn't require a conversation with anyone. And it doesn't require validation from anyone but God. Amen. 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 Amen.